For advanced post-processing, we can use a specialized program, Paraview, which is linked to SimFlow and can be started directly from the post-processing panel. It allows for complex visualization and manipulation of the data. Click Run Paraview button to start Paraview. And when the program is open, click Apply to confirm the default settings. Before we begin post-processing, we should make sure that we are analyzing the set of results that we are interested in. Initial values are loaded into Paraview by default. So, if we are going to post-process the results of a steady-state simulation, we need to load the latest set of results which is available by clicking the Last Frame button. Now, we are sure that we have loaded the data from the latest iteration or the latest time step if we are analyzing results from a transient simulation. As you can see, the pressure contour is displayed on the model of the catalytic converter, but the range of the legend was earlier automatically adjusted to the initial dataset. So we need to adjust the legend to the current dataset by clicking the Rescale to Data Range button. We can easily display contours on the catalytic converter by choosing different fields from the drop-down list. For example, if we choose U, that is velocity, the velocity contour will be shown on the model. Similarly with all the other fields that are available in the loaded dataset. However, this way we can only display contours on the model boundaries. So, for example, velocity on the wall is equal to zero, and we don't know anything about the velocity flow field inside the converter. In order to see what happens in the fluid region, we need to display the velocity field in a different way. First, we need to clip the computational domain using the clip filter. If we click clip, we can click, for example, the Z normal button to specify the normal vector of the plane that will be used for cutting. Once we click apply, half of the model will disappear and the other half will stay visible. Sometimes we may want to see the other currently invisible half. So to make this possible, we have to check the inside out option and click apply once again. For our convenience, we can hide the plane used for cutting. After this operation, the pressure field is displayed by default. In order to change coloring of the data after applying the clip filter, we should make sure that the filter is selected in the pipeline browser and choose velocity from the drop-down list. We can also click Rescale to data range to adjust the legend to the maximum and minimum values of the dataset. There is also a different way to show the velocity field inside the model. Instead of clipping the domain, we can create only a slice of the domain which we will color by velocity magnitude. Let's hide the clip filter by clicking on the I button in the pipeline browser, select the case and click Slice, Z Normal, and then Apply, similarly as we did in the clip operation. We can also turn the plane off for our convenience. Now we can display the velocity field only on the 2D slice of the computational domain by choosing velocity from the drop down list. If you want to rotate the slice in three dimensions, we may need to click the Change Interaction Mode button to change it back to 3D. In some cases, the interaction mode is automatically set to 2D after using the slice filter. If we want to show where the slice is relative to the model boundaries, we can display the converter by clicking on the I button, then change its color to solid color, and set its opacity to, for example, 0.4. When we press enter, we should be able to see both the slice colored by velocity and a semi-transparent catalytic converter geometry, which makes it easier to interpret the results. Another interesting feature is the possibility to display ISO surfaces of selected field. If we want to show surfaces of constant pressure, we can hide the slice filter and create a contour by clicking on the contour button. Pressure is set by default in this filter, but we can of course choose other fields as well. But let's leave the default setting and specify two pressure values for which we want to create ISO surfaces. The first is 40, and the second is 45. When we click Apply, the ISO surfaces will be displayed inside the domain. Some correspond to pressure equal to 40, and others correspond to pressure equal to 45. These are surfaces of constant pressure, but nothing prevents us from coloring them by velocity. So, if we choose velocity from the drop down list, we will see pressure ISO surfaces colored by velocity magnitude. We should also adjust the legend to the visible dataset. In order to display the volume between these ISO surfaces, we can use the threshold filter. First, we have to select the case because we will use the filter on it. Then, if we click threshold, we can specify the minimum and maximum pressure limits, 
that is 40 and 45 in this particular case. Once we click Apply, the volume defined by the threshold will be displayed and colored by pressure. We can change its coloring scheme to velocity, so that it's colored the same way as the ice surfaces we created in the previous step. If we now hide the contour, we will see that the threshold filter operates on cell values, and there is no interpolation between cells on the volume boundaries. So, if we want to smooth the boundaries, we should add contours to the view. Streamlines are often used to visualize fluid flow, so let's hide the contour and the threshold filters and try to plot streamlines from the inlet of the converter. In order to do this, we should select the case and click Stream Tracer. The first option that we can use is to release streamlines from a sphere of a given radius and position. We should type point coordinates, for example, minus 10, 5, and 5. And if we click Apply, we will see the result. We can also reduce the radius, for example to 1, and click Apply again. As you can see, now the streamlines are released from a smaller sphere. Of course, like in every other case, we can color the streamlines by velocity and rescale the data range. Another possibility we have is to release streamlines from a higher resolution line. If we change the seed type to higher resolution line source, we can type coordinates of two points defining the line. The first will have coordinates minus 10, 8, and 5, and the second, minus 10, 2, and 5. So we are going to release streamlines from a line located at the inlet of the converter. If we click Apply, we will see the result of this operation. In many cases, we may be interested in streamlines released from the entire inlet boundary, which is a little bit more difficult to do. First, let's hide the stream tracer and load the same case into Paraview once again. Click File, Open, and open the case. This time, be sure to unselect Internal Mesh and select Inlet in the table on the left-hand side. It means that only the data for the inlet boundary will be loaded under this case name. Next, click Apply to load the case. As you can see, only the inlet boundary is displayed in addition to the semi-transparent catalytic converter geometry. Now, we will perform an optional operation which will allow us to control the number of streamlines released from the inlet surface. Without this operation, the number of streamlines would depend only on the mesh size and we would not have any control over it. Therefore, we will use the mask points filter to specify how many streamlines will be released from the inlet surface. Make sure that the second case is selected in the pipeline browser and go to Filters, Alphabetical, and click Mask Points. Change on ratio to 20 and maximum number of points to 100 and click Apply. Now, we need to use the Stream Tracer with Custom Source Filter. We could select it from the alphabetical list of filters, but we can also use the Search Engine. Click Filters, and then Search, and start typing the filter name, that is Stream Tracer. Select Stream Tracer with Custom Source from the list, and press Enter. A new window will appear, and in this window we should select Input, in this case is the first loaded case which contains the data for the internal mesh. Next, we need to define seed source. In this case, we should use the mask points filter as the seeding source for streamlines. If we click OK and then apply, the streamlines will be displayed in the graphic window. We can, of course, change the streamlines parameters. For example, we can now easily change the parameters of the mask points filter to control the seed source. If we change on ratio to 10 and maximum number of points to 150 and click apply, we will increase the number of streamlines released from the inlet. Streamlines are very thin by default and we can change their thickness but we can also change their shape. For example, they may look more attractive if we plot them as ribbons, not just lines. Select the Stream Tracer with Custom Source and use the search engine to find the ribbon filter. Select it from the list and press Enter. If we click the Apply button, the streamlines will be transformed into ribbons. We can reduce their thickness and click Apply again to see the result. Of course, we can also color them by velocity magnitude and adjust the legend. Very often we may need to plot vectors. For this purpose, let's hide the ribbon filter and the model and show the slice. Change its color to solid color and use the glip filter to display vectors on the slice. Click Apply to apply the default filter settings. 
We need to reduce the size of the arrows by using a smaller scale factor, for example 1. Once we click apply again, better looking vectors will be displayed on the slice. These vectors are spatially uniformly distributed. We can control their distribution by changing the glyph mode, for example to every end point, and specify that we want to display a vector at every 10th mesh node. There is also an option that allows us to bind the vectors to the slice by changing the glyph type to 2D glyph. We can also change coloring of the vectors to solid color and color the slice by velocity, so everyone can easily analyze the flow direction and velocity magnitude. Finally, in some cases we may want to make a plot along an arbitrary line. Let's hide the slice and the glyph filters and select the case. Next, Click the Plot Overline button and type coordinates of two points defining the line. The first one will have coordinates minus 10, 5, and 5, and the second one 30, 5, and 5. So the line goes across the converter from the inlet to the outlet surfaces. If we click Apply, a new tab containing the plot will appear on the right hand side. All available values are displayed in the graph but we can change it by unselecting all the variables in the Properties window and selecting only those we are interested in, for example pressure and velocity magnitude. The graph will change accordingly. Professional post-processing may take a long time and in many cases we may need to analyze multiple similar problems which differ only in terms of boundary conditions. For example, we may need to analyze flow through the catalytic converter for several different flow rates. Fortunately, we don't have to repeat all these operations we have just performed to create contours, slices, vectors, plots, etc. Instead, we can go to File and click Save State. Saving the state saves all the filters that we have created in the pipeline browser. Now, if we have a similar case and want to perform exactly the same post-processing steps, we can go to File, click Load State and select the state file. In the window we just appeared, we can select path to another case that we are going to analyze. When we click OK, the case will be loaded into Paraview and all the post-processing steps will be performed automatically. So the only thing we need to do is to save screenshots and animations for presentation purposes.